this is about the United States, Vietnam. Many Americans fought for freedom in Vietnam and 65,000 lost their lives. And these are deeply mourned. But um, if you feel that way, you may not want to listen to the rest of this video. Hitler exterminated millions of Jews, killed millions of Russians, and many more around the world in that war. And when they tried German soldiers, soldiers would say, I was following orders. They told me to do it. They, quote, made me to do it, unquote. In the Vietnam War, one estimate of those killed was three, three million Vietnamese, many, of course, Chinese and others. The United States presidents and the military leaders carried this out indiscriminately bombed Vietnam and the presidents kept these secrets from the public. Nixon, Kennedy, Johnson. They indiscriminately bombed everybody. Agent Orange, where they wanted to destroy the country. The reason they indiscriminately bombed, they said the reason was but they couldn't tell who was North and who was South Vietnamese. You know, North Vietnamese might be hiding in villages or something like that, or might be a relative. But actually what was happening is that the top 1% of the wealth in the country, just like it is in the United States now, the top one ten percent wanted control of the country and American interests were tied in with those interests of the top percentile and this top percentile owned the land and the Vietnamese, Cambodians, Laotians were subsistence farmers just trying to get by. So when a movement developed in Vietnam, an uprising of the majority of the country, the population was revolting against this these overlords of who were controlling the power through their wealth in Vietnam. So when the people who were the revolutionaries, like in the United States, when the revolutionaries were recruiting and talking up with their neighbors, the Vietnamese would go to these people who were subsistence and says, join this and we'll put the country back in the hands of the citizens, just like the American revolutionaries were doing, wanted to do. So the Vietnamese 
were joining this, you know, taking back, giving back control to the citizens by the millions. You know, from every village and hamlet and hut. And so, in order to, the only way the United States could think of, of dealing with this is to just bomb the heck out of everybody. Just to cut down numbers, more than three million. The United States was supporting a very unjust and immoral group of people in Vietnam. Now, when there was a recently a chemical bombing and uh, chemical agents were used against the pop civilian population in Syria, I think, believe it was, 65 people were killed and the United States cried, war crimes, war crimes, war crimes, you know. This gives us the right to go in and bomb. I mean, the American top political and money power in this country are nuts. And look at Donald Trump now. He is trying to put sanctions against Iran, sanctions against Venezuela, sanctions against everybody who's doing anything with these people and seizing freighters, seizing coal, sanctions against North Korea, sanctions against China, tariffs against China, tariffs against Europe and Canada and Mexico. I mean, he's trying, he's trying to control everybody. This is insanity. And look at the opium wars and what the Western powers tried to do to the Asian powers. And look at what the Western powers are. Again, France tried Vietnam and gave it to the United States, took over, and now the United States and the Western powers are against Hawaii and China's development of technology, and they're trying to put China down and stop the East from developing. I mean, the uh, Western power structure people are just, you know, I can't believe that the citizens, if they knew what was going on, would would be, I, I know a lot of people would be for it, but, you know, I, I, I like the Vietnam War, when, the, when it came out to the public what was really going on there, uh, you see what happened. It was a war we couldn't win in the first place, a war we, where we shouldn't have been fighting, not, not for the power elite. We should have been trying to, to help the uh, revolutionaries. If, I mean, if we wanted freedom and human rights and democracy and, uh, you know, let the Vietnamese people to decide for themselves. I mean, we wouldn't tolerate Russia coming into the United States Look at what happened with just a hint that there might have been Russian involvement in manipulating the election. I mean, come on. The, the, how much manipulation can a, a bunch of hackers do to the public opinion? If the public opinion can be hacked like that, you know, America has got more problems than Russia. And that is the case. Russia is not a problem. The ignorance in the United States is the problem. And the politicians are hacking their demographic populations. They've got speechwriters who just use the specific words for the specific demographic group they're trying to manipulate and get support. And the po everybody knows the politicians don't follow their campaign process because they've made so many contradictory ones to begin with, you know. And yet the public goes right along listening, you know, and the speechwriters go from one state to one population to another just putting in new words. 
and the politicians are saying Russia's manipulating the the, the election results. <laughs> I mean, come on. The politicians don't don't care anything but getting elected. They just want power. Look at look at this. Everybody thinks President Xi is a is a dictator. I mean, a lot of people do. But look at what he made in a speech. He said, he said before the CPCC, he said, I've never spent so much time on a government program as I have with a poverty alleviation program in this country that has now raised close to 800 million Chinese out of abject poverty. That's more than the po entire population of the United States. There is not one president who's ever done anything close to that in the United States. And the United States leadership will tell you, A, democracy, freedom of speech, human rights. But, you know, the poor in this country, the poverty people in this population in this country, nothing, virtually nothing, is being done on that scale. There is no president or citizen that can say in this country that they have done anything close to spending the kind of energy that President Xi has done for the poverty conditions in his country. And, but that's just so small compared to all the other things that he has led and initiated in China. And you can see where China is going under his leadership just a real flourishing and flowering of his country. Look where the United States is with its great democracy, which is really just moneyed interest because the moneyed interest in this country is buying the votes of the Congress. I mean, that's what's happening. And American presidents are just into same old, same old, just trying to stay elected. Congress and the government isn't going anywhere. You know, the United States, uh, you know, can't can't hold candle to to China. China's is developing, and you know, and and the 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 top power and moneyed interest and political interest in the United States has just put a stranglehold on the development and the initiative and the creativity of the population just f to get money just to get money and power. And that's all Vietnam. The U.S. was involved in Vietnam, North Korea, etc. Just trying to have dominance in the world for the power elite and the money elite in the United States and the Western powers who were complicit in working in conjunction. But there should be a war tribes, war crimes tribunal opened up against what the United States did in Vietnam. Indiscriminately bombed civilian population. Period. Uh, no different than Hitler trying to, quote, exterminate the Jewish population. The United States presidents and generals tried to exterminate and all the soldiers, the U.S. soldiers that went over there to fight for freedom, complicit. They went along with it. Yes, their leaders told them to do it. But if their leaders told them to kill themselves, would they? Did they have to give up every shred of humanity to obey a leader? Sure, you need a, you, you sure you need people to follow orders in a war. But you got to f see if the person you're killing. I mean, if this is legitimate, I mean, if, are they a danger to you? 
Are they a danger to your country, really? These were very simple questions to answer. Now, Hitler's a different story. Now, I would be afraid of what Hitler was going to do to me if he got over here. He was a danger, clearly, to my country. He was clearly exterminating, even though nobody wanted to admit it. But the revolutionaries in the United States weren't interested in taking over Great Britain. The revolutionaries in Vietnam were not interested in taking over the United States or anybody. They were just trying to develop their own bloody country. And anybody who is being ordered to kill somebody, I mean, that's a fundamental human right to decide whether you want to carry out such an order or not. I don't care if you're a foot soldier. If you're going to kill somebody, what the heck is the purpose of what this accomplishing? And these are very easy questions to answer in a war. I mean, you know who, who's trying to do what. When whole countries are involved in a war effort, their intentions are very clear. Vietnam was not involved in a war effort against anybody. And the intentions of those for and against the revolution in Vietnam were very clear. Those for the revolution wanted development of the population to be involved in the economic and social development of the country. Those against the revolution wanted a continuance and persistence of the power structure and the money control in the country. Their, quote, standard of living well, the standard of living was ignored for the vast majority of the population, wasn't it? Well, you see, this is, what's going on there was very clear. You didn't have to have undercover CIA agents going in. I was in college when the Vietnam War was being raged against Vietnam. And they instituted the draft. And they threw everybody's numbers, as you know, their birthdays into a pot. And they said, tonight we're going to draw the order of who's going to be inducted. Give them a numerical order. And uh, I said, oh, I wonder what that's going to do. And people were betting on who's going to win, or if you call that winning. Uh, and I went to bed, and you know... I got up and went back to college, you know, in the morning. Yeah, I, you know, I was just kind of hanging around, and I said, well, you know, somebody said, uh, oh, did you see the birth date? So I don't know how I found out about it, but my birth date was number one. Yeah. I'm going, you know, look, now, this is reality. My birth date has been drawn by the government of the United States to be the first group to be inducted into go to Vietnam. Well, I, I really didn't know uh, what, what I was going to do. I haven't faced a situation like this before in my life. And, uh, you know, the Vietnam War was, you know, the, the, uh, the war uh, against the uh, North, the uh, citizens of the Vietnam was in full swing. And uh, 
so uh, I didn't know, but, you know, uh, a, a week or two or whatever went by, and I got a, my induction papers to to come down for the uh, physical, you know, the, to look you over. And uh, so uh, I, I just didn't know what I was going to do because I was really conflicted about about this, what was going on. And uh, so I remember that evening before the, the morning, I think it was 7 a.m. or something in the morning, it was appointment time for the induction. Uh, I was sitting on the couch, I just going, I didn't know. You know, and it, you know, it, this, this was, now the push has come to shove. This was the time, a decision, I had to make a decision. You know, I, I, I couldn't just go say, hey, oh, I guess this is the way it is and go, right? No, uh, the decision had to be made here. And I remember sitting on the couch six o'clock that evening, looking down at the rug, and I saw rice patties, and I saw the folks planting rice and things in their patties, and I just thought, you know, I can't kill these people. They're, they're no danger to me. I'm not afraid of them. They're no danger to my country. They're no danger to anybody's country. I, I can't do this. I can't, I, I can't go and kill these people. And at that moment, that was the decision. Period. I am not going. That is final. You can't tell me what to do. Anyway, I, if I don't give you permission to order me around, you cannot do it. I will stake my life on that. And let me t share with you a story about the Jews being led to the extermination camps. There was a group of Jews that were taken out of the boxcar and were be they took all their clothes off and they were all these people were standing around. And uh, you know, people knew what was coming. Uh, but there was a ballerina. Young ballerina. And she started dancing, doing ballet in the circle formed around her, Jews and German soldiers. And she danced, and then she pantomimed, having a rifle, and she persuaded one of the soldiers to let her hold his rifle. And so she danced around a little bit with a rifle. And then she started shooting the Germans. Bang, bang, you know, just letting them have it. Of course, they shot her dead. But she probably never felt a thing. She wouldn't give up her freedom, her dignity. She took her life. Sure, you may take her life, but she's not giving up the one thing that she has. And she's going to take you down with her. That's the spirit I'm talking about. Before you kill somebody or do anything, nobody can make you do anything. And she's a good example. She, they couldn't make her go to the gas chamber. And think if all the Jews had that spirit. Long before they got them into the boxcar, how are all these German soldiers, wherever they had them, 
going to put down when every frickin' Jew will murder him on the spot. I mean, talk about difficulty. That's what happens, though, when people give up their sovereign right to preserve their life. Why, if you give up, what's your life worth if you let somebody take you to the chopping block? You've given up. You allowed it to happen. I mean, you may as well fight and see if you can't win. So that evening, I decided I'm not giving up my sovereign right to decide whether or not I'm going to kill somebody. You can't tell me to do that. It isn't your right. You can try it out, but you ain't going to succeed. And so, uh, so, uh, I just, uh, I won't go into the story now, but, you know, uh, here it was, my family, society, the president, the generals, the military, the whole freaking country was telling me to go to Vietnam and kill these people, get in, no, uh, real freedom and blah, 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 and democracy, we're going, promoting this, and, you know, and the, the soldiers were feeling so dedicated and patriotic, and it was so almost like a religious fervor, you know, to, you know, to defend your country, you know, talk about manipulation of the population, Gerbil would, would, would be outdone just because people didn't think for themselves what is going on here, and the information was ready available if people just thought. And that's why governments and people, it's power of people, don't like people to think. That's why they call people intellectuals. They try to uh, downplay the importance of thinking. They like the people in power and money and leaders like to get the emotional hamstrings of individuals because that's the way they can manipulate because people who are emo emotionally controlling within themselves, it shuts down the thinking process and gathering information process and then getting objective assessment process. And that's what happens. Three million Vietnamese just collateral, they call it collateral damage. Well, it's extermination. Three million, just because people didn't think for themselves. Nobody, nobody can stop you from thinking about anything you want to think about. 